Like, they're like, why isn't this manifesting for me? Because yeah. you're not taking the leads. You're not listening to your intuition and yeah. your gut and the way you're feeling and actually following the divine guidance. Even yeah. though you might think it's silly to go get coffee at a coffee shop somewhere, you yeah. can meet the love of your life there. It's important to take action on these things. Like, certain things present themselves to you in perfect timing for a mm-hmm. reason. Hi guys! Hello. Welcome to Ed Arlene's Spirit Cast. If you're new to this podcast, we talk about all things related to mindfulness, magic, astrology, tarot, meditation, the law of attraction, spirituality, anything in that realm. Today we are talking about active manifesting versus passive manifesting or manifesting with divine feminine versus divine masculine and so on. So before we start talking about all that stuff, I want to remind you guys that we sell candles. We handcraft them ourselves. And right now all of our fall candles are available. We make amazing fall candles. My favorite is the pumpkin, but we also have really fun ones like zombie. Um, We have a witchy Witchy woman. Witchy woman, which is one of my favorite as well. I like the, the way, they all have silly warnings. The warning for uh, witchy woman is I'm a magical bitch. Because we are. And um, yeah, and we also have other candles too besides uh, fall scents. Just the fall scents are new for, or they're, they're re-released, you know, for the fall. And yeah, so you want to tell them where they can find us. So you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr. Now we're using our Facebook page. Um... And on YouTube. And then we'd also like you to like or follow us, whatever you're listening to this on. Um, And then we post Reiki Infused videos almost every single day to YouTube. So you can go there and subscribe and get some Reiki. We have playlists for different types of whatever you need. And you can just let those play and um, get some healing. And then we also send out free Reiki to everybody sign up to our email list on our website at edarlene.com. Um, you can do that too. And then we have Reiki at the end of every single podcast episode, so stick around till the end for that. Well, I first heard about um, the differences between manifesting from several different um, people that I've heard speaking. I don't know. I've just been running across it and I, before. So not that I fell off of like the law of attraction or anything like that, but I like expanded my like mindfulness or whatever practice, and I wasn't like staying hip on the the times, <laughs> the, the times. <laughs> you know like there's like these law of attraction trends i know like the the cup methods and all these things but um or maybe i just well, wasn't isn't meant that, to um, quantum this. physics in, at all Who yeah knows, that's, cup method, that's quantum physics man that was like popular with that's the thing of like people gurus. um we should talk about the um reality transurfing and um the quantum the quantum leaping or quantum jumping um and that's like I think it's where the two cup method falls into is that quantum, um, quantum physics realm. I think there's like it's overlap it's water. because um, I think there's overlap with that stuff because it's the whole idea of consciously like creating your reality. And some people say that you're um, that everything already exists, but whenever you're um, using like the law of attraction, that you're like sliding into the universe that has that thing that you're looking for so you're jumping so i guess we're like constantly jumping and that's why i think a lot of the law of attraction gurus and stuff like that bring up the two cup method and they end up getting involved with like the quantum like jumping and all that stuff because they might subscribe to that idea that everything is existing everything you want is already here it's just which trajectory which timeline are you getting on Mm -hmm. so you'll hear a lot of people talk about like switching their timelines and um, all of this stuff, there's, like, different variations and different references and different wording for it. So, um, you know, if it well, sounds different for you, how we're explaining things, then you might have just heard it from somebody else or learned it from someone else um, that differs from who we learned it from. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so anyways, I started um, hearing, I was, I guess I was, like, kind of familiar with the idea of, like, the law of action and all that stuff, but, like, um, the idea of there's different ways of manifesting things and one involves a more aggressive energy or a more like I don't want to say aggressive but a more um pronounced like this is what I'm getting this is where I'm going 
versus a more um, I like a energy that's more what the universe wants for me, what is best for me, what's in alignment with with my life as it is. So yeah, we have a couple ads and then we'll get into it. Yep. And we want to remind everybody to vote. If you're in America, elections are coming up. Um, if you're doing a mail-in ballot, please mail it in as soon as possible. That way it gets counted, hopefully. And be safe. Go to the polls. Don't forget. Thank you. This is not an anchor ad. That means you are listening to this episode on YouTube. If you're enjoying this podcast, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Our podcast is available on all major podcast platforms, including Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Okay, let's get back to the episode. All right, we are back. So, um, like I said earlier, we're discussing um, passive manifesting and active manifesting. And what I understand with it, your passive manifesting is whenever you are doing, let's say you are wanting to draw in love into your life. It's very non-specific, but the energy is powerful for the intention of what you're drawing in and you may or may not have a timeline. Usually it's one of those manifestations that is in alignment with my highest good only according to divine will, you know, that type of manifesting. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're involved in Reiki, there's a lot of, um, so Chris Penzak has a book about magic and Reiki. If you're familiar with, with Reiki, there is a very like magical, um, you know, it's a very magical experience and you can use it for your rituals and things like that. And one of the things that he talks about with Reiki is that you, we as practitioners often leave it up to the wisdom of Reiki for our manifesting and we don't really give it like set timelines. So if I'm healing something, um, in regards, let's say I'm trying to manifest money into my life or I'm healing like Um, some sort of money blocks. I'm letting the wisdom of Reiki heal whatever is preventing me from seeing that potential of abundance. And then I'm using the Reiki and the ritual um, very, like, fluid, very, like, whatever is for my highest good only. And I'm not telling it specifically, like, how much or... It's more of, like, even if I was, it would be more of, like... um, I would like to open myself up to receiving like a thousand dollars and only if it's according to divine uh, will and according to Reiki. I know, I don't know everybody does Reiki differently, but um, it's going to be a more, we're trusting like a higher guidance. So it's going to be a very um, a passive almost. Not that you're not manifesting, but you're very like, I just want to draw in this into my life and I want to draw it in however it best serves me. Um, and then you're all, you're caught, like if you're doing the law of attraction, you're going to be constantly thinking about like, back to the law of reference, I am loved, you know, love comes to me, love finds me. Like you're just constantly thinking those like positive thoughts, but you're not giving it deadlines. And then you're not necessarily taking massive, act, like you are, ta- like, I don't know how to describe it. So you're going to need massive action with the law of attraction regardless. You're going to have to take steps. You're going to want to follow, le- they call it following leads. So that's whenever you have like divine guidance come through in certain ways. Those are like gut feelings or synchronicities or things like that. And then when you're acting on them, it's getting you closer to that manifestation. So if you're drawing in love into your life, you might have a lead where it's like, get get your coffee at that Starbucks. So then you do that, you know, then you, you don't normally go there and you do that and then you end up meeting somebody, like you don't meet the love of your life. So there's no, you're just very like open to whatever the universe is providing. That's how, like, the the passive manifesting kind of works. So you're just kind of, like, putting out into the universe what you want. And, again, it's more um, open to, like, your highest good, that type of thing. And there are magical practices that involve that style of manifesting. And it's just going to be for, like, your general 
life, like well-being things that you want to see. Um, so a lot of, I mean, a lot of people will say you have to manifest and be extremely specific. And we're not saying you're not being specific when you're doing this passive manifesting um, because you are setting intentions of the energy you want your life to have and you want it to be. You want it to be filled with love. You want it to be filled with happiness and you're embodying that. You want to have a certain, you know, uh, a job, a certain way that, you know, that fits you. You want to align with your highest soul purpose. It's kind of like the bigger picture manifesting in a way. Yeah, it's bigger picture manifesting and you're not getting fixated on the exact outcome. Like, it doesn't have to be specifically, let's just say, like, you want a new car and you want it to be nice and um, have all the, like, the things that you want it to have, like, all the accommodations, but you don't really care about the color. So, or like the make and model. Or the make and, stuff. and model. Yeah. Or like um, the year. You just want it to have everything that you need that you, that would be for your best good. Like yeah. the perfect car for you and you're open to whatever that car will be. Yeah. So um, that, that's like a good example. Mm-hmm. Um, but not, not, like not fixating on the concrete, like this is how it has to be or I don't, you know, mm-hmm. or it's not it. So like, let's say you want to manifest money. So... Um, you want to manifest a thousand dollars, but you're open to more. So mm-hmm. you might receive like eight hundred ninety nine dollars. So that's that's what the universe thought you wanted, like you required for that time. Not the thousand, not the million, but you get like what you need. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like that, you know. Um, I I would say. That is exactly what it's like. Whatever is going to be for your highest good, and you're not attached to the outcomes, you're not attached to the minute details, you're attached to whatever is in alignment with the best possible outcome, the best possible like purpose, like for your sole purpose. Because sometimes we manifest things that aren't, may not be, or for our highest good. So whenever you're doing this more passive manifesting, it's with the intention that it's like for your highest good. It's what's meant for me. What's mine is mine. Um, there's the law of substitution. Uh, substitution. Yeah, that's Yeah, it. that ties into the um, Florence Sobelshin's law of substitution. Um, it's like, I want this or better. Mm-hmm. Like, love. Like, you said love. Like, I want to manifest a partner that embodies all these qualities if it's for my highest good. Yeah. If it's meant for me. I'm calling in what's divinely mine. Mm-hmm. Not trying to usurp someone else's, like, relationship or something like that. Yeah, so you would, it would be, like, like you said, so you're not trying to manifest a specific Person. individual yeah. to love you. Or you're not trying to manifest a specific job. You're manifesting that job that is in alignment with your highest soul purpose. And um, that's one of my, like, favorite ways of doing manifesting is having, like, what is mine is mine, what is for my highest good. And um, that's probably why I like the the game of life and how to play it, because a lot of her manifesting revolves around uh, letting go, kind of, like, releasing um, to the universe to kind of work out, work things out, and being very open to... Of the best possible, you know, outcome in alignment with what the universe feels is best for you. And uh, you're not giving your power away doing anything like that. What you're doing is, is trying to get into alignment with, like, a better timeline or a, um, I don't know how... I think it, it helps you to release and let go yeah. of your manifestations. It helps you to trust... It's letting you trust the universe and trust that Mm -hmm. everything that you need is always going to be met perfectly because that's, you know, we're just in this form. There's other energies at work that are working on your behalf at all times. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it, it, and for the way we operate, like it helps me to let go and Mm -hmm. trust and believe that that's going to manifest for me. Yeah. Like one of the things she says in the book is she will say, um, like there's a topic about like business and stuff like that. And she says, to just constantly affirm, like, God is my supply. Or you could say the universe is my supply. Yeah, source, um, God, whatever. Well, ha- whatever word you want to use, but you say they're your supply whenever you're like, okay, this is what I want to see in my life, and I'm trusting that it's going to happen, and God is my supply, and you just kind of, like, let it work its way out. And you're still taking actions towards that. Like, you're still following leads and things like that, but you're just more fluid with it, yeah, I would say. I, I feel like that that's part of it. Like, people don't take... Like, they're like, why isn't this manifesting for me? Because yeah. you're not taking the leads. You're not listening to your intuition and yeah. your gut 
and the way you're feeling and actually following the divine guidance, even yeah. though you might think it's silly to go get coffee at a coffee shop somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like you said earlier, like you yeah. can meet the love of your life there. Yeah. Like it's important to take action on these things. Like certain things present themselves to you in perfect timing for mm-hmm. a reason. Yeah. So if you're asking for something and then like you start to get like a lead in some way, you're it would be best to not necessarily question it and not let your ego get in the way and probably, like, act on it. So, like, if you're like, oh, I want the perfect crystal to help me sleep, and then you stumble upon a crystal that you didn't think would be, like, I don't know, you stumble upon obsidian or something, and you're like, oh, I thought this was for protection. Well, maybe you need that to help protect your nights, your sleep. And then if you don't, you start questioning why you have it, you'll end up blocking that manifestation of, oh, I wish I had slept better. You know what I mean? There's lots of reference to that, like, of people who don't follow leads. And you can, there's different things. You can ask for confirmation for things, too. Like, you can ask the universe, like, a popular one is um, asking for a feather, to see, like, a visual of a feather for yes. Like, if you were, had, like, a question in your head or whatever. Um, or just ask, like, give me, um, give me clear evidence or proof that this is what I'm supposed to be doing mm-hmm. and then let it be open like you said the feather or yeah. let it just be open to something that you will know like this is me like seeing an owl or mm-hmm. if you keep on seeing the number like 11 11 or something mm-hmm. like that um, trust the synchronicities that you're seeing those are all leads Yeah. so this type of manifesting is definitely involving you being in flow with and connecting with like divine guidance and your inner like your core like your heart like a very heart-based um you know manifesting and it is associated with the divine feminine and it's probably because of those aspects of connecting to that like spiritual self and you know when you hear people talk about law of attraction you'll, you'll hear like contrasting opinions about it and i think that sometimes that contrasting is because there are a variety of ways to manifest things and you might have somebody who's very much an active manifester versus somebody who's very like fluid like i want the best you know all in alignment with me like manifesting and putting their energy in that way and then they end up you know there's just different ways of of teaching it and different perspectives and what works for some people might not work for others like some people might like the passive manifesting better because it allows them to detach from outcome because one of the big things that prevents manifesting is the attachment to outcome Mm -hmm. so if you're a passive manifester you're probably gonna have an easier time of just kind of letting go because you're just letting that trust go to the higher power again you're still taking action you're just kind of allowing more allowing versus active manifesting you're gonna it's going to take a little bit more effort for you to trust because you're being very specific about the details. And this is whenever you get into like people, you know, teachers who will say things like, you know, if you're trying to manifest money, manifest the exact amount you need. And they might tell you to say why you need it. Some people believe you should tell the universe like what it's for. I know like if you were using like certain magical practices, you're going to tell the universe why you need it. Um, and then they're going to say, put a deadline on it. So there'll be, there's a lot of like experiments on YouTube and stuff like that, where they'll say, you know, manifest a hundred dollars in two days or in 24 hours and stuff like that. So that's, Ooh, you know what, it's that book, um, the E square, E yeah. square does that. Um, that's cool. But that's mm-hmm. like, isn't this, she's utilizing a lot of like the quantum physics in that, right? Yeah. I think um, they use her. There's, like, people do courses on that book. Yeah, so E-squared is a good one if you are interested in, like, testing things out, like, this active manifesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then The Secret also references a lot, like, you know, print the check out and put yes. the check in your, you know, where you can see it every day and put the deadline. Mm-hmm. Either one of these manifesting tools work, whatever, you choose what works best for you because yeah. it all, everything's always going to play out the way it's meant to. Yeah, and so, like, a more active manifester is going to fall in with, like, the law of action. Mm-hmm. And they're going to, like, really specifically, like, this is what I want. And then they're going to start embodying that and living and acting as if. So you'll act as if with passive manifesting, but with active, it's very, it's, like, a more aggressively, like, this is what I'm doing. And... Um, this is a type of manifesting where you'll have like a lot of vision boards. You're going to have like the affirmation lists, very, but very specific affirmation lists. So instead of like, you know, I am abundant in all, you're going to have, I attract money 
by tomorrow or whatever. You're gonna have yeah. a very like, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. A year, yes, yeah, that's a perfect. Yeah, one. that's perfect. Yeah. Um, or I am living in my dream home mm-hmm. in California with the perfect beach setting with white mm-hmm. walls and you know minimalistic interior yeah yeah it's very specific very specific um and that's where like you're gonna have like we said before like the vision boards and that's when you're gonna do the journaling with like my ideal day like you know the acting as if because you're applying that energy and then even more on that you're gonna take massive action where it is very much geared toward like okay i want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year well how am i going to make a hundred thousand dollars a year universe show me what i need to do and then you're going to start acting on it like not just like, oh, I want to be this by the end of the year. Or, oh, I mean, like a passive manifestor is not even going to, might not even say by the end of the year. They're just going to be like, I would like to have an income of. At the perfect time. At the perfect time uh, where I'm f- completely sustained off of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Where a, a more active manifestor is going to do what you said, $100,000 by the end of the year. See, that's what most of the people, most of the gurus and stuff on the internet say mm-hmm. to do is this, this active manifesting yeah. and then. When things don't manifest, like, come into fruition in the time frame, it discourages you from yeah. pursuing it. But then there's other things at play. Like I mentioned in the last episode, like, there's divine timing in mm-hmm. play. There, It wasn't meant for you. Yeah. You know, there's many reasons why things don't manifest. Like, you're, or you're meant to manifest more and better. And that's why we like to do the passive. Because it's like this or, be- or, mm-hmm. or better. Like, you're just calling it in. You're not specifically asking. Because, like, mm-hmm. let's just say, like I said earlier, like $100,000 a year. But what if you were meant to manifest a million dollars a year mm-hmm. or 60000 or whatever? And if you're fixated on that 100000 and all you make is 60000 then you're going to think that's crap and then you're just backsliding. Yeah, and like you have to be very per- careful with the act of manifesting because when you are so fixated on the outcome it will definitely stop that manifesting. So you have to be able to tell yourself that it's okay if it doesn't work out because that's not what was meant for me, even though you are very specific on what you want. You have to be able to like kind of draw that line where you're still open to an outcome that is not what you expected. You have to be able to see when things manifest, even if it's not exactly what you had in mind, it might still manifest in in a specific way somehow. And it's very hard to understand and see those manifestations whenever you're so fixated on what you want, or you'll end up attracting something that might not necessarily be for your highest good, and then um, have to kind of do the process over again. I mean, there's perks to all of it. I mean, you know, sometimes it's nice to have that, like, really that push and that drive. And then some people like to manifest using a combo of both. So, like, the pro to doing a passive manifesting is going to be that you are going to be manifesting things that are in alignment with you, that are for your highest good. Uh, off, you will not harm anyone in the process. This isn't like you're not going to, I don't know, you're not going to take away from anyone in any way. You're not going to harm yourself in any way. You're not going to like draw in experiences that are not for your highest good or your highest purpose. Now, the cons might be that you won't manifest in the time frame that you would like to manifest in because it's not meant for you at that moment. So it's going to be hard to remember you have to, like, remind yourself that this is not one I'm supposed to have. It. I'm going to get it when I'm supposed to. And because when we start getting fixated, you start to derail that energy because mm-hmm. you start to go into a lack mentality. And then um, another con is that, like, you're not doing – if you're not consciously, like, specific enough, it's going to really leave it open to, like, anything. So you still have to, like, have a general, like, knowing of what you – like – You know, you want a beautiful home that is in the ideal location where you are meant to be, that kind of thing. And then if you do know where you want to live, you can probably throw that in there Mm -hmm. whenever you're manifesting. And vision boards and stuff still work for it. It's just... All this stuff works. It's It's just what you... How you, like, present it. And then the the pros to an active manifester is that you... The things might manifest faster, for one. And then specifics. So you might be able to manifest specific things that you really, like, really, really want. But the cons are that... It is harder to, it might be harder depending on who you are to have those things manifest. It's easier to to get, lose um, sight of where you're going. It's easier to disconnect from the spirit of it all. And Mm -hmm. it's it's much easier to lower your vibration because things aren't manifesting exactly how you want. Like you didn't get the red car, you got a blue car and you're like, oh, it doesn't work. But you still got a red, you know, you still got a car, you know, that kind of thing. 
Um, and then that's where there's a lot of different teachers with Law of Attraction. They start teaching these different methods and saying it's the end-all, be-all. So if you're just getting into it, you're like, I don't know what to do because this teacher's saying to be specific and this teacher's telling me not to, yeah, you know? It, it's like a lot of people do ask, believe, receive. Yeah. So if you can believe that you are going to receive that $100,000 in a month, mm -hmm. then that it's going to work. But if you don't truly believe that you can, yeah, then it, it might, you know, it, it won't. It mm -hmm. might not, may, it may or may not, who yeah. knows. But um, that's why like, we prefer the passive manifesting. But you have to do what works for yeah. you. Nothing too, like when people get into law of attraction, mm -hmm. like we did it too, like just bought all ton of books, tons. Yeah. Like sometimes it's best to just choose one and focus on that for a while. Choose a book that resonates with you and then just really um, study it and apply the principles that they outline instead of pulling all this information from all these different teachers um whether like youtube gurus mm -hmm. or teachers it's not it's best to just choose one and focus on that for a time frame until you master it because you can yeah. get all these like you said counteractive You'll approaches get, yeah, out of, it, of yeah. it so you have these different like, some people will tell you like you said earlier like to do the graduate list every day be super 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 specific like mm -hmm. incredibly specific at time um, frames and, and add time frames um and look at the vision board every day like like create this ritualistic mm -hmm. um approach to it versus like envisioning what you want like like perfect home a loving relationship mm -hmm. um and letting it be open to it but it's whatever you can get your belief behind because of the, and it's very important to believe that it can happen for you mm -hmm. you have to like be able to feel it so like if you feeling yeah um if you're going to do a more active manifesting approach, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually truly feeling. That's probably why some of these teachers who say to do those lists and stuff every day and they seem more aggressive is because it is really trying to get you to like feel it and really drill it. And that's the only way you're going to be able to like feel it. And the potential of having that stuff backfire is a lot easier because you're going to have like, what if you're using affirmations that are not resonating with you? Like there's a a lot of different factors that can come into play, but I definitely agree with you. I think that um, pick a law of attraction book, you know, or maybe like to read it. And if it resonates, that's what you go all in on. And then if it doesn't, try a different law of attraction book versus buying like a whole bunch of them and then trying to like all of a sudden you're having like one teacher tell you, like you were saying that you have to do a gratitude list every day and then another teacher is telling you to do super long affirmations and then another teacher is like, no, you have to use short affirmations because that's the only way you yeah. know. And then all these people are just going off of their experiences. So your experience is going to be a lot different or the similar than theirs, but you have to make sure that you're tailoring your manifesting around what resonates with you and how you operate and understand and feel things and what you believe to be possible yeah if you believe it's possible for you to get that red corvette tomorrow then it will manifest into mm -hmm. your reality but if you don't believe that's possible then it won't mm -hmm. this is all about belief and trusting that it's going to happen yeah and that's something that like you know it takes time sometimes it takes time some mm -hmm. people can just like apply these principles like law like the you know yeah. the action the more active manifesting and then just mm -hmm. you know really thrive off of that method but you have to choose what fits and works yeah. with you because we're all different and yeah. we all you know have different like beliefs what we can achieve in our reality and what's possible for us so it's kind of like figuring out a method that resonates with you and understanding that there's more than one way to manifest and there you know there's probably more than just active passive this is just like how we understand it to be there's tons of techniques but um, it's like you said you have to choose what resonates with you and give it a whirl and see what see what works best for you and know that things, at the end of the day, things are going to manifest when they're meant to. The universe does not work in our time structures that we operate out of. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, you are putting the intention out there that you want to be a millionaire, it can manifest in a year, it can manifest in 10 years. Things happen a certain way for a reason. And things will manifest in new reality when it's meant to. Period. Like, that's my opinion. Yeah. That's like... I mean, what proof, proof is just the way our life has gone so far. But, like, so you could be... You're always going to get what you, what you need when you need it. I don't know. Well, okay. That's, like, even not even related to law of attraction. That's just the uh, damn belief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's just... Um, for me, I like, the law of attraction... Like, I feel like sometimes it becomes like a mo like a um like a sales pitch like a motivational sales pitch and you have like people yelling at you and they're like 
Let me alive. I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach you how to be rich. You're gonna be rich as fuck doing this. You know what I mean? And <laughs> you're gonna get like, rich like me. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I'm making money off of you wanting to make money. But I don't know. But I feel like sometimes it's like, like there's a spiritual aspect to it, and there is a component of it that involves you allowing for things to happen and allowing for inner guidance and that type of thing to come to play. And um, figuring out methods that work for you and understanding that they are not all set in stone. And then being able to really tap into that, like, um, energy. And because there's, uh, like, things that can affect your manifestations are the vibration that you're at. Because your vibration is going to attract in. Like, like attracts like. Yeah. So you can be saying all the affirmations you want and be projecting whatever. But if you don't feel good... You're not feeling ha- like how would you feel if that thing manifests? If you're not feeling that way, it's going to be a much slower process. Or you might even get the opposite, depending on the type of energy that you're cultivating. So if you think that everything works is nothing doesn't go work out in your favor, of course you're not going to be able to manifest anything because you're vibrating at a frequency that says nothing works for me. Mm-hmm. And that's so that's like healing those belief systems. That's where healing and stuff comes into play. And then there's also, um, there's divine timing that comes into play. And then if something's not meant for you, it's not meant for you, which is fine. Karmic cycles. Yes, yes. Soul contracts. Mm -hmm. There's way more at play than just this, Mm -hmm. like you want what you want to pull into your reality. Like there's other things that can block it, not from manifesting that is higher than just, oh, I thought a bad thought or Mm -hmm. I don't, there's more at play. Yeah. And that's something like, like mess well it didn't mess me up but it's like from all of our learning and teaching mm-hmm. and stuff that we've been getting um over the past couple years that's something that you have, like that had to wrap my head around like but things always manifest when they're meant to mm-hmm. yeah and then like i like for me i like really resonate for my manifesting with the idea of feeling and the importance of like my vibration and my feelings towards things because um, if you are in a, like a lack scarcity mindset, a very fear based, worry based mindset, it's gonna affect your manifesting. Um, so you're gonna want to like learn how to be present and stay grounded, and that way, that way you can take more control of that like future, because you ultimately decide your future. And um, if you're stuck in like loops or you're stuck in this in a um, an energy that's a very like a lower energy, it's going to be very hard to manifest something higher that you want. So it's like involves working on your what you're med- you know meditating to get grounded. It's going to involve maybe like fixing your energy, but figuring out what needs healed so that you can vibrate yeah, higher. Figure out so what that, needs to go. Yeah. And another, well, we mentioned this in a different episode, but like a sign that you need healing can be look at the parts of your life where you have a harder time manifesting things so like um we use the example that some people are really good at manifesting like wealth but they're not good with like their love life or some people have a very good say like romantic life but they have a hard time manifesting friends so whenever you have those instances there might be some sort of healing that needs done with the belief systems around that or there might be some sort of like karmic pattern that needs worked out ancestral healing there might be something there that needs to be worked on so that you can manifest it's not like oh if i sit here and i i write all this it's gonna it's just gonna shake its way out no it's that oh i need to go in and do the work i need to go in and do the shadow healing that might be present i need to clear blocks um i need to figure out my thought processes like what do i think about this so like of course you're not going to be able to make friends if you think that your friends are all all betray you but that might be a core belief you have from a life experience that you don't even realize that you have so the law of attraction can be used to help figure out what needs um healing and worked on and stuff like that yeah it's like a tip of the door it's like it's another lead it's a lead to figure out what you need to heal in your life and release and let go Mm -hmm. and reprogram um you know, there's so much stuff that people hold on to from just even things that you think are insignificant yeah. that you could still be holding on to from childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. Like, or you're stuck in the same cycle or if you, it, it is, it, yeah, it's just, it's just a starting, it's just like affirmations, like you said earlier, like the affirmations, if an affirmation about money makes you upset and there's, there's something that needs healed with your beliefs around that money. Yeah. So, um, so it's not one, like a one and done or something. I don't definitely you definitely have to feel it out and figure out what works for manifesting 
to understand why things won't work and then figure out a, a way of manifesting that helps you and understand the like spiritual component to it and the benefits of having a meditation practice a visualizing practice or um it, you know healing or journaling where you're writing things down like okay like analyzing how you feel when you use certain informa- uh, affirmations to know if they're working for you or not not just keep saying affirmations over and over again that are not helping because they're triggering something within you like there, there's like little things like that you can do to help like tweak it um but that i mean that's just it that's that's how it is You've gotta it works it. it really works it does work it, it does that 100% 100% <laughs> works um but i think it's you you do whatever method you can put your belief and trust that it's going to manifest for you mm-hmm. um ask believe receive period all right, so um, at the end, we have Reiki. If you want to list, keep listening, the music's going to change. And then um, don't drive because it might make you sleepy. And yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you for listening.